Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. You guys don't know who Tiffany Red is. Um, she was also the lady who came out. She's Cassie's friend. She came out and basically also called out P. Diddy. Um, for his ways and basically had Cassie's back and so now she's a singer songwriter she does like the whole gambit and she's coming out and she's speaking against people in the industry but what's very interesting is I talked about songwriters and their dilemma who remembers my static major deep dive put a teacup if you guys remember my static major deep dive that I did close to two years ago because it's very interesting that every time I do a deep dive, it ends up being like a national topic. I don't know. I just find that very strange. But I was on this two years ago about how songwriters are mistreated. They're not paid well. They don't get their credit. People have literally forgotten Static Major. If it was not for Static Major, Little Wayne would not Little Wayne would not have been able to go commercial as he did with Lollipop. That was because of Static Major. Static Major wrote so many hits, um, you know, that us 90s kids loved. You know, he collaborated a lot with, with uh, Aaliyah, and he was part of the basement crew with Timbaland and Missy. He wrote Genuine's Pony, and then Genuine tried to act like it was all him, and like his wife said, well, if it was all you, how come you haven't written another big hit like Pony since? So I've always loved songwriters because... It, it's it's like they're telling a story and they're putting something together, you know, in ways that people can't do. It's a spiritual process. It's no different than making content. You know, even when I do my deep dives, it's like I start with a blank canvas, nothing on there. And I really have to really think of how I want it to look and sound and, you know, visually come together. And that's what songwriters do. That's what people who make beats and who produce do. And I've been calling it out for years that I find it very unfair that you can be in a studio. Let's say I'm in a studio with an artist, right? And, you know, you can literally give credit to anybody in that studio if you so choose. There's literally females who have credits on song who did nothing but give head in the studio. You just gave head. And you're credited on the song. And that took away from the beat maker, the producer, the songwriter. I'm not lying when I say this. I really know situations like this. On top of that, now you have a thing, and it's been a thing for a while, right? Diddy did that with his children. Justin is credited as a writer for songs that Mace wrote. He gets publishing that should, be that should belong to Mace and his family. Justin Combs. Justin Combs was in a pamper. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, he couldn't talk. But he's straight off of somebody else's ingenuity, ingenuity, whatever you call it. You know what I'm saying? They're genius. I can't think of the word, right? Um, you have a lot of people who get credit for other people's work and it's so unfair. And so, like I said, I've been talking about this for years. Four years, so I'm, and I'm not a songwriter, you know what I'm saying? I know how to write poetry, but I just, I'm not really into the music aspect. I, I'm, my form of media is video. Like, I like video, I like editing, I like telling visual stories. But to me, that's like the, the sister, right, to music. Like, people, anybody who produces and sings and raps, it kind of goes hand in hand. It's all a process, you know what I'm saying? Even when you watch rappers work. Thank you for writing it out. Ingenuity. Bam, there you go. That's the word. I couldn't think of how to say it. <laughs> but now that y'all spelled it out, bam, that's the word. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've been in the studio and I've watched people, you know, go through the whole process of writing a rap, writing a song. It's not easy. You know, sometimes you see these in your dreams, you hear melodies. And I think that's the saddest part, even in this day and age, 
everything is so computerized you can just make beats you don't have to know how to play the drums you don't know how to you don't have to know how to play the clarinet you know um instruments that's not really being pushed anymore like it was back in the day that's one thing i really respected about prince's artistry he literally did everything he composed the music he played the instruments he did so much you know and then you have this record label trying to get half oh uh, and he's doing everything like it's insane so a lot of people get screwed over. I want to play you guys just a snippet of my uh, deep dive. You know, I don't ever really share my deep dives. I'm going to play this snippet for y'all of kind of some things that were said. And then we're going to watch Tiffany's video. So this was a deep dive I did a few years ago here. In 2012, this was an issue. I mean, it's been an issue you know, since the dawn of, you know, music. But even back in 2012, there were summits where songwriters were coming together to talk, doing BMI conferences, and were saying how they would work on a song with an artist, and then the artist is, you know, random homeboy or, you know, beat maker in the background who had nothing to do with the lyrics, all of a sudden feels like because they hummed a line, they deserve credit. And credit and publishing is how you eat for the rest of your life. Have you ever taken less variety credit than you deserved? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
But um, when I saw that Northwest is now like, let me bring it up. Bring up the article. I, I'm not, oh, here it is. Let me, let me just show y'all. So this is what went viral today on social media. And I don't post stuff about Northwest because she's a child. I don't understand why all these blogs are so obsessed with her. But Northwest becomes one of the youngest artists to chart on the Billboard's Hot 100 with talking. Let that sink in. Imagine you're a grown adult with bills. You're a singer, a songer, you're a singer, a songwriter, excuse me. You've written songs for the biggest people, um, or even you're an up and coming singer. You've been singing since you were five years old in the band and at church. And now this nepotism baby, and no shade, right? Cause she's a child. So I don't want to act like I'm talking down to a child, but she's a nepotism baby. Let's keep that real. If her mom wasn't Kim Kardashian and her dad was not Kanye West, she couldn't even smell these charts. She wouldn't even know what a billboard 100 chart was. I'm Miss Westie, you can be my bestie, whatever the hell she said in that song. And she's literally now the youngest female artist. I just don't like it. I don't like it. And y'all can take it as shade or whatever. I don't like it. It's no different than DJ Khaled putting Assad on the track and because he said ga ga goo goo, now you have him down as a producer as if he was really making beats. You're taking splits away from other people. And I get it. I get the other side like, oh, well, they're setting up, you know, generational wealth. And, you know, they're setting her up with publishing that can help her in the future. But let's not act like this family is poor, right? Like they, they built generational wealth and some. So it's almost like, well, how much money do you need? I don't know. I just... And the same thing, I, and I know Beyonce has done it with Blue Ivy and stuff like that, and maybe it's a little competition thing. I don't know. But I just feel like it really takes away, um, you know, from real people who really, like, want a break, and they cannot get a break in the industry because everything is going to nepotism babies. And again, I'm not trying to diss a nine-year-old. It's no shade towards her. She was just told to get in a booth and say what her daddy wrote. But I just have to keep it real. Yeah, I think the song is cute. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with the song. I think the song is cute. I think she did a good job on the song. I'm not knocking her, but when I see her now being on the Billboard 100s, it, I just, I don't know. To me, it's not the same as when Raven Simone came out. I think Raven Simone was either nine or 10. Who remembers that song back in the day? That's what little girls are made of. That's what little girls are made of. That's little uh, Raven Simone came out with that when she was like Northwest's age. It was a real song, a real video. We love that song. The little girl from the Cosby show. That to me was a real song. That had nothing to do with nepotism. She really had to. Y'all remember that? Put a T come for I remember that song. Thank you. Can y'all compare when Raven Simone came out with That's What Little Girls Are Made Of to what Northwest did? Keep it real. Or even Blue Ivy. Thank you. Go back and watch that video. That's what little girls are made of. She literally was like a little Mary J. Blige. She had all these different scenes and concepts. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who remembers that video. That was one of my favorite songs as a kid. When she came out with that song, y'all gonna put some respect on Raven Simone's name. Yeah, she was like a little Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott helping her write it. Yup. Go and watch that video and let me know if that compares to anything Northwest or Blue Ivy have ever put out. Raven Simone had a full-fledged video. And it was so dope. They were riding around their power wheels and it, it was really dope. And that's what I'm saying. Like, stuff like that I can respect. She really had to put on the full artistry. Rapping, filming a music video. Music videos, they might be three minutes, but that shit can take days. And that girl killed it in her little cross color fit. I'm like thinking of the video in my mind as I'm talking. She had a little cross color outfit on. She was dancing. And I mean, it was dope. Little Bow Wow's another one. You know, even Willow Smith, when she first came out, she really came out. It was her song. You know, I whipped my hair back and forth. They had a full music video. I can respect that more 
That's all I'm saying. I just feel like it's getting lazy. I can just add my child to a track to say a few lines and now you too are a star. Where's even little stars back then? Remember ABC? Thank you. ABC, The Boys. Um, who else? Um, my Lucky Charm. I think that was The Boys. Um, ABC, Another Bad Creation at the Playground. You know, Playground. That's where I met this shorty. Oh my gosh, don't hit me. Don't get me started, y'all. And Aisha, you are the girl that I never had. And I want to get to know you better. Aisha, oh my God. <laughs> okay, y'all are bringing me back. Let me stop, honey. Y'all are bringing me back. So that's what I'm saying. I come from the era of like kid bands, kid singers, you know, immature. Yes, I will never lie again. She will always be my friend. Yes, honey. Okay, Sammy, I like the way you look at me. I like the time we spend, baby. I like what we have grown to be. I like it, girl. Don't you know I like it? Ah! <laughs> okay, I'm calm. <laughs> that, so, so for me, that's the era I grew up in. When I see kids are getting on the billboard, I need to, they need to be singing, dancing, putting out a full music video with effects and that, I'm not seeing this with this Northwest Kanye song. I come from that era. So I have no problem with kids doing music, okay? But if you're going to call yourself an artist, I need a single. I need an EP. I need a full album. Because all the kids who came before Northwest and Blue Ivy, they had to put in work. They made songs for children. This is why there's no nothing for tweens anymore. This is why little girls are sitting their ass at Sephora because they're busy watching Northwest's skincare routine at nine years old. I would have loved it if Northwest came out with her own little, you know, kitty boppy song. And it was just Northwest on the song. Not attached to her daddy. Like, yes, we had little Romeo... You know, we all knew Master P, but that was Romeo's song. That was his song. That was his work. So that's all I'm saying, child. Don't get me started, honey. That's all I'm saying. They're all, a, a lot of them were Nepo babies. Willow's a Nepo baby. Little Romeo's a Nepo baby. But the difference is when Willow came out, she came out with her own music. People didn't even know that Willow did music till I whipped my hair back and forth came out. That was a full song. It was a full video. It hit. It was, it, I loved it. I loved I whipped my hair. Same with Little Romeo, my baby. Yes, his dad is Master P, but Romeo killed it. My baby, that video was so, like my little sister used to watch that video all the time. Like I love that song. So, you know, oh, Romy, give me one more chance. Like, yes, like those were like kid songs and kid performers, and they had to put in just as much work as the adults. But now what I'm seeing now is just the fact that, oh, well, such and such is my dad, so I can just hoop and holler and say a few words on the track, and then I get the credit, I get publishing, I get praise, I get articles. No, I, I need to see like a little Raven Simone. I can't give this like props. Not when we had Raven Simone out here who did a full-fledged music video paying homage to icons who came before her. Y'all remember she had the little Madonna scene where she looked like she was on Vogue and she had the towel on her head. Like she paid homage to so many female entertainers in that video as a little girl. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So now let me go ahead and play uh, Tiffany's um, video here where she's talking about singer-songwriters and what they go through. So let me go ahead and pull this up. It's on my screen. All right, Miss Tiffany. It's kind of long, but I'm going to try and um, fast forward a little bit of it. All right. I think we can just start a bar right here. Songwriters, why? Because I was a songwriter and I walked away from the music business because of the things that I speak about. So I have extensive experience 
almost all of my friends are in the music industry and write for your favorite artist, like a Beyonce. Um, so I'm not up on the internet just talking shit and like, you know, making things up. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I ain't trying to get sued. That's called defamation. I'm not defaming anybody. I am um, coming to y'all with things that I can back up. I don't never get on this platform and talk about shit I don't know. I be having, you see this? You see this thing? I am organized, honey, okay? Y'all might not think that because you watch me on the internet and you don't know me like that for real. You only know the front facing Tiffany red, but like. Let me fast forward a bit. In my living room. In my living room. <laughs> Tamar got, I don't know. I don't know what she ended up getting. I think I own like 85% of that song. But I should own all of it because I did all of it. She didn't write shit. Seven Streeter, who's a songwriter? This one really hurt my heart. Seven Streeter, just being honest. Me and Monsoor did that song. It was originally called Bitch. I wrote that song by myself. I'm not even really a big co-writer like that. I prefer writing songs by myself because I don't know, I just prefer to write like that. So I have a lot of records that I have placed that either have one co-writer on or that I've written solo dolo, right? Seven ended up with 10% of that record. I fought like hell for her to not have any of the publishing because she didn't write anything on it. Publishing is my only source of income. I didn't even, and by the way, <laughs> none of the artists that, I'm, that I've mentioned have a career anything close to in music, Beyonce. None of them do. But the reason why I'm bringing up my experience with every artist or almost every artist that I've worked with that has taken publishing that they did not earn on the songs that I wrote for them is because there is a precedent that's set. The reason why I called out Beyonce is because Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation. And so if there's anybody that could reshape the precedent, if there's anybody that could influence the industry that had the power and the money and the cultural like thing to say, you know what y'all, you're right. These songwriters have been out here. We've been in the street, literally. I have been in the street in front of Spotify. I've been in front of Universal. I have sat and I have talked to all y'all publishers. I've talked to y'all publishers. I've talked to the DSPs. I've talked to the copyright royalty, uh, the, copyright, the US Copyright Office. I talked to NMPA, I talked to RIAA, I talked to SONA, I talked to NSAI. I talked to all of them. And guess what? Y'all are still broke. Okay, that's the fucking truth, right? Okay, so the people that are like, oh, this is not true. I had somebody call it propaganda yesterday. It's not fucking propaganda. The reality is, is there is no A-list artist, B-list artist, or C-list artist that's not taking publishing because that is the way the music industry works. And to deny that is delusional. And what I will not allow <laughs> is for anybody to make me feel like I'm in the twilight zone because I know I'm not in the twilight zone. I can pull up my records. I talked to somebody yesterday, somebody's uh, a manager of somebody who is a writer and producer on Renaissance, okay? The record is one of y'all faves. The song was written six years before it got to Beyonce. She got 25% of the song. I've talked to another, another writer who wrote and sang on one of your favorite songs. Credit not right, all kind of shit fucked up. His business still isn't handled. Beyonce was on tour last year with that record, with that person's vocals, all that. I'm not crazy. And here's the thing. The reason why people who work for Beyonce don't talk is because they're all on NDAs because that's also how she works. She silences people so that nobody can speak. I'm not a writer that's written for Beyonce. I haven't shot, I haven't sh shot my shot at Beyonce because I'm don't. i not willing to give her any publishing. Not because I haven't had the opportunity. I've had the opportunity to work with everybody 
And I've turned down a lot of stuff because I'm not willing to play these games. There's a massive power dynamic happening. Please don't act like it's easy to negotiate with Beyonce and her team because it is not. If, it was th if that was the case, there would not be so many people coming to me like, Tiff, this is how much was taken. Shit is not negotiable. It's not. These are the terms, which means, okay, cool. Then we work for you, Beyonce. So that means you're an employer. But either way, to imply that the artists do not have to be responsible for the business practices that they exercise with songwriters to, to, to insinuate that the only way you are treated fairly is if you are managed by one of the gatekeepers is bullshit. It's bullshit. You shouldn't have to be in company with a gatekeeper to be treated fairly. You should not have to have a gatekeeper on your team to make a livable wage off of music that is making people billionaires. Them Grammys don't pay the bills. Those plaques do not pay the bills. There are people with Grammys and plaques who can't pay their rent. I know people who are super accredited. Broke. It means nothing. Trust me, I know. I remember having a conversation with a writer who wrote on what was the record Beyonce did after or before Renaissance? I can't remember whatever the record was. I remember talking to one of the writers and talking to them about how much of the publishing she was taking. And this writer was like, look, Tip, I, I don't want no smoke with me. Like, I just let her take the publishing. That's bullshit. All of these writers that you guys see celebrating in the studio with these artists posted up in pictures like, yeah, everything is all good. Those writers are being exploited. Those writers time is not paid for. Their services are not paid for. Their contribution to the, to the sound recording is not paid for. Their, the, the, um, their first use of the copyright is not paid for. Their fucking parking is not paid for. Their fucking lunch is not paid for. That's the truth. The truth is, is that we work in an industry that proclaims and makes billions of dollars but can't even buy you fucking lunch. But I'm, but I'm tripping. But I'm tripping. No, they're tripping. And you're tripping if you with them. There's people that are like, then nobody had no gun in your head. The gun to your head is the power dynamic. Think critically, y'all. The gun to your head is the power dynamic. The gun to your head is your livelihood. The gun to your head is being excluded and ostracized and, and retaliated against for tr even trying. That's the gun to your head. They don't need to put a gun to your head anymore. Because they control everything. That's the gun. You being silenced. That's the gun. Okay. We're not going to listen to all 17 minutes. But y'all get the points. Um, come back on the screen. So she said a lot. And so this has been causing a lot of debate on social media. Lots of back and forth, people filling away. And what's very interesting with what a lot of the responses I'm seeing from social media concerning this young woman, because to be honest with you, she told no lies. And she said, she didn't say that she wrote for Beyonce. She's, she didn't ever claim that. She says she knows people who have written for Beyonce, but she's caught up people that she's written for like Tamar Braxton and others. But um, it's very interesting how a lot of people are taking her claims and I'm trying to figure out, is it because she mentioned Beyonce's name and she's saying, look, Beyonce, you have a platform, you, you have enough power where you can change some of this dynamic. We're just asking for, you know, if we wrote the song, she's not saying like, okay, if I'm in a studio with Beyonce 
and she's there writing with me and I'm there writing with her, then yes, we split it 50-50. What they're saying is that they're literally writing songs in their homes, in their studio, and they're not getting any credit. Like the, the artist wasn't even there. There's a part where she talks about Zendaya, that somebody wrote a song or might've been her, they wrote a song and they gave it to Zendaya. And Zendaya was nowhere there in the writing process, but she gets the publishing. She gets credit on that. Esther Dean is another one who's one of my favorite uh, writers. You know, uh, I love that song. That song she had with Chris Brown. Make your booty go boom, 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 and, and. I love that song. And Esther Dean, she's another woman who's written so many songs who does not get enough credit. Money Long. She's finally getting her shine, but she's been in the industry for years as a songwriter. You know, so... Yeah, drop a low. That's the song. Drop a low. That is my jam. I couldn't think of the name of the song. Boom, 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 boom. I love that. But um, the thing that's just really frustrating is I feel like people are low key dismissing her because, you know, a lot of the song. Well, she's a songwriter. Not a lot of them are complaining because they're scared to like really speak their truth. But because she's a black woman, and she's calling out Beyonce. Like I felt like there was more sympathy and more empathy when it was the writers for TV and film. Remember the Hollywood strike, right? This was just a few months ago. Remember all those white men at the picket line crying tattoo tears, saying that they're not gonna be able to pay their rent. They're not getting what they deserve as writers. Writers are the heartbeat of a show. Without the writing team, there's nothing to shoot. There's no actors to do auditions to book. It all starts with a writer. It starts with a thought, an idea. And so I just felt like there was a lot more sympathy for when a lot of white folks were in Hollywood picketing and saying, hey, I'm a writer and I can't pay my rent. This is not fair. This industry is making billions of dollars selling movies and TV shows and we're not getting a cut of the streaming. We talked about how, you know, the streaming really only benefits the studios. It doesn't really even benefit the actors and actresses, let alone the writers. So it's very interesting now that as a black woman, she's talking about writing, but in a different field. Her writing is not in television and film. It's very interesting how the messenger is not being dismissed by a lot of people who three months ago were crying tattoo tears for all the people who were, you know, TV show writers and movie writers. So I'm trying to figure out what is the difference? Is it because she brought up Beyonce and we all know Beyonce is a sacred cow and nobody's supposed to ever mention her name unless it's to, you know, praise her. I, I don't get it. And I'm a Beyonce fan. Low-key beehive member. Yeah. I, I just find it interesting. Because she really minds her business. I haven't really seen a bunch of mess attached to her name. She's just saying like, one, pay me fairly, but stop giving our publishing to people who weren't there. Stop, be, you know, stop accrediting people who did no work. Just because you gave somebody head in the studio, why should you get credit for the rest of your life in publishing money? When that percentage could go to the person who actually wrote the song, who actually made the beat, who actually produced it from start to finish. That's all she's really saying. But I think because she brought up Beyonce's name, that's where a lot of people are being really dismissive. And I don't think that's fair because I don't think she's saying anything different than what a lot of those people in Hollywood were saying months ago. And I think anybody who's a writer, if you sit and you write and you put things together, you should be compensated. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of brain power. It's a lot of thinking and thought and sleepless nights. You know, when you're writing and creating. Being a creative, it's, it's, it's hard because sometimes you cannot shut your brain off. Your brain is always going where it's even hard to sleep. And when you get ideas, you got to jump up in the middle of the night and write them down or, or put them in your phone, take screenshots. You can just be walking down the street and be like, dang, this would be cool or this is a good thought. This is a good idea. And you're taking pictures and taking notes. Like it, it's hard sometimes as a creative to like just turn your brain off. So they definitely should be compensated. Like she said, you know, we're making money for a billion dollar industry and these people are writing for hours at a time and you can't even provide them with lunch. Like when I used to have writing sessions, when I would work on like, um, I was working on like a YouTube series I had wanted to do. 
back when I lived in LA and we would have writing sessions, I would order pizza and make sure that people got fed. I mean, the series didn't go anywhere, but I still fed people. And it's like, if I'm doing that, just little old me, why would somebody who's as big as, you know, a big celebrity, why wouldn't you provide lunch for your writing team? You know, it's just little things like that. So I don't know. I just, I just think that it's a, it's a big conversation. And I just think like people are not taking it anymore, you know? And yes, it's easy to say, well, just leave the industry, go find a regular job. And she could, I'm sure she maybe also works a regular job too. You know, I don't know her backstory. I don't know her finances, but if that's something that you love and that's your passion, why shouldn't you be compensated for it? You know? That'd be no different than if you're being mistreated at your nine to five job and, I, and you know, I just say, oh, well, just go find another one. Well, no, I, I worked my way up the corporate ladder. I, I worked hard. I put time into this company. I just want fair treatment. You know, and I don't think there's anything wrong for asking for that. Somebody says Beyonce gets too much blame on everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that too. It seems like her name is always being attached to something. But I get what she's saying, though, why she bought it, Beyonce. Like, Beyonce, you really have the power to, like, kind of help, you know, speak on this. Let's not forget. Like, can we keep it real? Wasn't it Beyonce's husband who had that stupid Illuminati meeting? <laughs> that's what the internet called it. It wasn't, though. Remember, they were all crying. Remember all the artists? When That's why he started Title. Let, let me, let, I mean, is she really that far off? to say, hey, Beyonce, can you speak up for us? Wasn't her husband in that bootleg Illuminati title meeting? Remember, it was Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Usher. It was like all the Kanye. Y'all remember that big old title meeting? And they were crying tattoo tears about how artists aren't getting paid enough and y'all need to stream music on title so that way they can get more money. And what did the people say? Look, look, Patrick said, T don't figure the thing. I really don't, child. What did the people say? No, we're not, we're not, you know, some of us left and went to Title, but most people are like, I'm not leaving my Apple streaming services. You're charging twice as much. I can get the same music on Apple. I can get the same music on Spotify. So Title eventually fizzed out. But is this any different than Jay-Z's Illuminati Title meeting? No. She's asking for her to do the same thing, but not just for artists and the people in front of the camera. Do it for the folks behind the camera. Do it for the songwriters. That's all she's asking. So I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong. Y'all remember that damn title video? Everybody was like, oh, hell no. Not these damn billionaires, millionaires, and you know what I'm saying, uh, A-list singers crying for more money. Meanwhile, indie artists, we forget about indie artists. They barely make what they should make. But you got Jay-Z, Kanye, Alicia Keys, and all them crying tattooed tears. Child, we put out the tiny violin and just kept on streaming on Apple. <laughs> I just, I just think everything should be fair across the board. You know, whoever works on something, everybody should be compensated fairly, right? And that goes for the studios. Like, it doesn't make any sense that these studios make billions of dollars, but the writers can barely afford rent in L.A., you know? So, especially when you're talking about things that last a lifetime. Music. You know, music has the power to bring people together or divide people. But music lasts a lifetime if it's good music. So if it's good music that can last through the generations, people should be compensated for that. It's only fair. So it just shows you how dirty the industry is. It really does. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.